and this is a picture of me trying to freeze light. Light is all around us. It allows us to see, heats our food, gives us stuff to twirl at raves, and is how we find out about our universe. For example, I bet you didn't know that you actually emit light yourself in a process known as bioluminescence, the same as fireflies, just that it's too soft to see with the naked eye. Or that for the first 300,000 years of our universe, there wasn't any light anywhere. Or check this out, Australian scientists have recently found a way to freeze light. What does that even mean? How can you freeze light? Why would they want to do that? Can you eat it like an ice block? And how can freezing light make our computers one million times faster? That's what we're going to find out. Everything except the ice block thing, that's uh, just a bit silly. What we see as light is what happens when an electric charge moves through space, moving its electric field, which in turn makes a little magnetic field move, which itself makes an electric field move, and on and on and on through space at 300,000 kilometres a second. It's why we call light electromagnetic radiation. The distance between the fields moving up and down determines light's wavelength, or the colour that it appears as. If it's just right, between 400 and 700 nanometers, then we can see it with our eyes as visible light. But light can be invisible too, with radio waves up to hundreds of metres long. Or super short wavelengths, like UV or ultraviolet light. The highlighter on my face absorbs the ultraviolet light and emits it as visible light in a process known as fluorescence. Just like the quinine molecules in this tonic water, absorbing the UV light from the lamp and this purple laser and fluorescing it as blue light. Different molecules absorb and emit light differently, which is why the quinine is blue and the highlighter is yellow and orange. Light can provide power and help us save power, like with this LED light. LEDs are super efficient because they don't emit any invisible light but instead emit a handful of individual colours that appear to us in combination as white. They're made just for human eyes. So light's pretty awesome. And as I mentioned earlier, it turns out we can even freeze it. How is that even possible? And what does that even mean? How did your team freeze light? So we put light into a pile of rubidium atoms. So it's a particular atom we choose. We choose a frequency, a colour of light that interacts very strongly with these rubidium atoms. We essentially do a trick where we make the atoms play past the parcel. So the photons come in one side and they get absorbed on the other side and spat back in the opposite direction and they go round and round in the rubidium atoms. But if you could look at the light, if you had some magic camera that could see the light going around, it would be this sort of frozen ball of light. The individual photons would be travelling pretty quickly backwards and forwards, but you just see a blob of light sitting there in space. OK, so the answer to my next question is pretty tricky. So before I ask it, a quick demonstration. Yeah. Yep. Well, I've uh, an experiment for you to do. Yep. So with, with this ball, do you reckon you could stand about here? Yep. And then, uh, and then throw the ball through that slit? Yep. Just give it a go. Woo! And then it's like, one. Can you throw it through that one? Sure. Landon, one more, one more. Can you throw it through both at the same time? Ah, I don't know. Well, the particle the would have to split. Exactly. Well, yeah, so that's what, kind of what light does. So it's yeah. like, it's crazy, but um, even if you threw like a million tennis balls, they'd end up behind there and then it'd end up behind oh. there. But if you threw light at it, most of the light would end up in the middle. Like it'd interfere because yeah. it's a wave. So once it hits something, it would split. Yeah, yeah. It would travel as a wave and go through both of the slits at the same time and recombine uh, at the back, interfering with itself. It's this ability to do two things at once that scientists call superposition the building block of quantum computing. OK, I think you can ask your question now. How does freezing light help a quantum gate or a quantum computer? To build a quantum computer, you need a quantum gate. So classical computers use classical gates where you have ones and zeros, and the ones and zeros control each other. So a quantum bit is a one and a zero at the same time. It can be some mixture of one and zero, and then you have to be able to manipulate that, what we call a superposition state lots of ways of building a quantum gate. The particular way that we're thinking about it is what if you could build a quantum gate using light? And light's really great for quantum information applications because it travels really quickly, but the light doesn't interact strongly with the second photon. And so this great strength of light is also its great weakness because sometimes you want to use this to have one photon operating on another. And so the idea of being able to freeze light in one spot ultimately is to be able to build up an interaction between single photons. If the photons are just travelling along really quickly, they won't talk to each other very well. 
So can you freeze light? Definitely. We're doing it in Australian labs with clouds of chilled atoms, building the next step towards quantum computing. Who knew frozen light could be so enlightening?